Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar today, Events Training, the Ins and Outs of Blue Jeans Events. My name is Maggie Bliss and I will be your moderator this morning. Today I'm joined by our Blue Jeans expert training expert, Michelle Dickinson, and our Blue Jeans sales rep, Damian Giuseppe. Um, I will walk through how to use the Blue Jeans Events product and its best practices. So before we kick things off, there's a few housekeeping items. We are using Blue Jeans Events right now, so you are currently an attendee in a one-way viewing experience. If you have any technical issues, please put them in the moderator chat and we'll address those as soon as we can. And if you have any questions regarding today's topic, please put those in the Q&A and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. And lastly, this will be recorded and I will send it to all of you after the event. So I'll pass it off to Michelle. Right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Michelle and I will be your trainer for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and take a look at events training. And we'll talk about our agenda for today. So today we're gonna cover the things that you need to do prior to the event taking place. So we'll talk about some pre-scheduling, actually scheduling the event and the things that you need to do after you have finally scheduled your event. Then we'll talk about during the event, we'll look at the various different roles and their dashboards. And then after we'll talk about all of the post results that you'll want to take a look at. And from there, let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about Blue Jeans events and um, the features that we offer. So you can join a Blue Jeans event from any conference room or desktop or mobile, as well as it will allow you to reach up to 15,000 attendees uh, on a large scale. And so if you also can have Excuse me. You also can have up to 100 participants, meaning that you can have up to 100 presenters on the line. That would be presenters and moderators. We'll talk about a little bit about that a little bit more later. You also have very easy to use moderator controls. You have engagement tools that will help you engage your audience, such as question and answers, your public and private chat, as well as polling and live audience engagement um, that will allow them to answer the polls on the fly. We also have event cloud recording that will allow you to access um, the recording and share it with others later. So now let's take a look and we will get started and look at um, pre-scheduling. And so when we talk about pre-scheduling an event, what I'd like for you to do is to get into your mind a, a upcoming event or an event that you've already put on so that you have a live case scenario to kind of relate to. First thing we wanna take a look at is and decide is when is this event going to take place? Is it going to be a multiple day event or is it just gonna be a one day event? Then we wanna talk about our broadcast time and duration. How long is this event going to last as well as um, what time is it gonna take place in the day? From there, you wanna look at your location. So um, whether it's going to be completely virtual or would you have this in actually a live location with microphones and everything and cameras and stuff set up and then also be streaming it virtually. Participants, uh, you want to decide who your participants are going to be, who your presenters as well as your attendees are going to be. And then are you going to make this a private event or a public event? And whether or not you're going to require registration, do you want to um, acquire extra information from your registrants and um, kind of control the number of people that come to the event or your audience interaction tools. Again, that will allow you to um, allow them to ask questions. Uh, you can send out polling information and much more. So when we talk about an event, um, we have three different roles. The first one is going to be your moderator. I like to think of an event as a stage production. And so the moderator is going to be the equivalent to your director or producer. Those are the people that are controlling everything in the background and making sure that the show is coming off well. Then you have your presenters. Those are gonna be like your actors. That's the role that I'm playing here today. And so I'm the person that's gonna be out front being seen and actually um, presenting information to the audience. 
and then you have your attendees. Now your attendees are uh, where you guys are and they are able to just sit back, be informed, inspired, and listen. Um, so Michelle, I can, sure. Just to jump in real quick. Um, so a couple things. Uh, this is Damien, by the way. I've probably worked with a lot of you. You, you recognize uh, my name. Um, one thing just to, to notice when you came in the event, before you started, uh, I kind of call it the curtain down mode, where we were all in, me, Michelle, the other presenters and moderators, that was a, a pre-broadcast mode. The screen you saw there was just a simple blue, you know, welcome to your event. It'll start shortly. Uh, that's just our default. But I did want to highlight that you do have the ability to uh, to change that and brand that. So in the event settings, which I think Michelle will get through, uh, you'll be able to see that you can actually change not only the beginning, but also the end. So you'll be able to put your own graphic, logo, design, um, so it's a little bit more customized to your event. Um, and just one slight uh, change, the, this is changing by the day around here, but the, uh, the first slide you had with 15,000, we can now go up to 25,000. So just want to make sure everybody's aware in case you have a big event and possibly even more if you have that use case. So go ahead, Michelle. All right, thanks. So now let's talk about actually scheduling our event. So we're going to take a look. And so the thing to know most is with BlueJeans events, you need to schedule directly from our browser. So you would go to bluejeans.com forward slash scheduling, log in. Once you've logged in, then what you want to do then is simply go to the events tab that you'll see across the top. Once you click on that, it will actually allow you to schedule your first event. So by clicking on schedule event, the first card will pop up. This is where you put in your title information. In the description field, I typically like to put my agenda so everybody knows what the event is going to cover. And then just below is where you'd put in your date, time, and duration. So since you've already thought about this before, then it'll be very simple for you to um, put in that information. And if it happens to be a multi-day event, then go ahead and click on repeat event. After you've done that, click on continue and it will bring up our next page. And this is where we decide what kind of event we're actually going to put on. Is it gonna be a public event? Now, public event doesn't mean what you would ordinarily think. Public event just means that it was open to anyone um, versus a re restricted event, which allows you to have it restricted to just your enterprise. However, that will require single sign-on. So once you've decided which way you're gonna go with that, then simply you can then decide whether or not you want to have uh, registration. So you guys had to register to attend this event. And that allows us to collect the names and information um, of the people that join the event. And it also allows you to have a unique sign-on, which means that no one else would be able to use your sign-on. If you sent it to someone else, it would only allow the one person in. So whoever got there first, the other person would not be able to get in. Whereas with uh, completely public with no registration, then you can send it to anyone. They can forward the link and as many people uh, as would like can join. Of course, up to the 25,000. All right. So and, now and by the way, Michelle, just real quick, I uh, just want to highlight uh, Michelle had launched a poll just in case. Uh, uh, I know you're going through your deck, but if you look as Michelle's going through on the right hand side, you should see a poll. Um, she'll probably talk a little bit about this, but um, you can see what that polling looks like, how to respond to it, and then uh, we'll see those live results as they come in. So go ahead and answer the poll question uh, as you're listening here. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is event branding. And with event branding, um, as Damian mentioned earlier, you have, you guys saw the welcome screens that we see here, and those are the generics, but you absolutely can customize this, and I suggest that you do. And what you'd want to do is click on custom message, and then from there, you would be able to put in a PNG file or a JPEG file, minimum of 1280 by 720 and up to a megabyte large. If you want to add any words to your branding, you need to make sure that you combine the text and the media first and then make it one file. That way you can upload your welcome message. And if you choose to use your branding, you will also need to brand your thank you message in the same format. All right, and to do that, actually what you would do is click on custom. It would then allow you to upload the welcome message as well as the thank you message. The next page that we'll see is at just the center of that very page is you'll see the settings and a drop down arrow. If you click on that arrow, 
it will then bring up these choices. So this is how I decide how my attendees are going to actually be able to interact in the course of the event. You have the event chat, which will allow them to be able to chat amongst themselves. Sorry. And then you also have the ability, and this is always on, is they have the ability to chat just with the moderator, which is our setup for today. So you can enable this or disable this depending on your event. Then you have your attendee search. Um, if you wanted to allow attendees to search for other attendees, you could enable that. Next up, and probably the best feature, is going to be our question and answers. This allows you to interact with your attendees. It allows them to be able to ask questions, send those questions across, and then the presenters or the moderators can actually answer those questions for them. Not only can they ask questions, but if you allow them to ask them anonymous, anonymously, then they are able to ask questions that they ordinarily probably would not ask um, because they didn't want anybody to know that they asked the question. So depending on the subject and information, you might want to allow anonymous. The other thing is, is that once you have chosen this option, you want to decide whether or not the questions that come through will be automatically approved, and then you would refer to your presenter or defer to your presenter to decide which questions they would actually answer. Um, what we have set up today is we have a dedicated moderator that is going to be in the background. So as you send questions across, that person will go through and screen the questions. And then uh, once they are approved, then the presenters can answer those questions. And last but not least, and I always use this feature, uh, it makes life a lot simpler. And this is the auto record feature. This allows you to be able to hit the broadcast button and it automatically starts the recording for you as well. Other than that, you would have to choose um, do the broadcast first and then do the record button. I'll show you that a little bit later on when we get into the moderator's dashboard. The next page that we have, and we're almost done, I promise, is um, you, if you wanted to allow phone dial in, there's a couple of things you need to know. Phone dial-in uh, doesn't work very well unless you're having a complete webinar with um, audio only. You can have up to 500 attendees that way. But if you're going to show video, then I suggest that you not use this option at all because in any broadcast, whether it be television, radio, uh, there is a delay once the two packets, the audio and video, get put together and there's a 30-second delay so you don't want somebody to hear in real time and see the video on a 30 second delay. So choose one or the other. The next one is uh, my personal favorite, and this is the raised hand feature. And what's great about the raised hand feature is this also is another way for your attendees to be able to interact. This allows them to raise their hand. You can screen them before you allow them to uh, come up, be seen and heard. So it's kind of like standing in the studio audience and somebody runs up with a microphone, passes it over to a person, they stand up and they're able to talk into the microphone so they're able to be seen and heard when they ask their question. The other, the next thing is gonna be our display attendee count. You can determine whether you want to display the count or if you um, don't want to. The, attend the presenters and the moderators are always able to see the attendee count. This last one is kind of similar to walking into an elevator. You have a music playing um, while you're writing. In this case, this is for our attendees and they will have a um, nice jazz tune, a little bit up more upbeat than an elevator music, but a nice tune that will play while they're watching your welcome message. After you've done those choices and decided, then go ahead and click on schedule. And we have finally scheduled our first event but we're not done yet. The next thing that we need to do is, um, excuse me, is actually invite each one of our roles. So the thing to know is, is that a presenter has a different login than a moderator and a moderator has a different login than a, an attendee. So I always start with the attendees tab first because that's usually gonna be the bulk of my, my invitations. And uh, if you do not require registration, then what you'll see here instead is simply the link for them to join. My suggestion is, is that if you don't already have a third party software that um, that you manage your. Sorry, if you're going to require registration and you don't have a third party software that manages that, then you can also use the BlueJeans. 
you can copy the registration here, paste it into your management software, and actually be able to um, take care of the invites, excuse me, from there. The other thing is, is that if you're not requiring registration, then what you'll see here is simply the link for them to join. And then you would take that link and copy it into your email, customize the email, be able to use your address book and then send out the invites that way. So two different ways to do it, depending on which options you've chosen. What you wanna know then is, is that you need to do a rinse and repeat. So after you've invited all your attendees, then you would then move over to your presenters tab or your moderators tab, doesn't matter which way you go, and then invite those people and then uh, do the same for the next role. After you have all of that done, then you can simply go ahead and click on done. And we are ready to then talk about um, if you registered or required registration, this will allow you under the blue jeans form registration, it will allow you to add up to 10 custom questions. If you are using the third party software, then you of course would manage it from there. A couple things that you will want to decide um, if you're using the the blue jeans is whether or not those registration forms will be automatically approved, meaning that the moderator, if you don't set it up for automatic approve, the moderator would then have to manually approve each one of those registrations. You can also set it up so if this is going to be include your enterprise as well as people outside of your enterprise, you can put in your domain name for your enterprise and all of those will be automatically approved and then you can manually approve any of the outside ones so you have the choice of setting up that up either way that you prefer and then last but not least is going to be your email notifications so i know myself whenever i sign up for a webinar i'm all gung-ho and then the day comes i have 12,000 things going on and i forget so i like the fact that the system will allow you to have a notification the day before or you can have a notification um, an hour before, or you can do both. Even if you've used a third-party registration, you still have the option of having the email notification go out the day before or an hour before or both. All right, so all of the particulars are set up and ready to go. Now we need to talk about post-scheduling. We need to look at the things that we need to do before the actual the event goes actually live. And that requires preparation and rehearsal. So I don't know about you, but you never want to show up to a play that the actors have not rehearsed and they don't know what, what their parts are. It makes for a bad show. So we don't want to do the same when it comes to putting on an event. Again, it's a big production. And so what you want to do is simply make sure that you hold at least one complete rehearsal. My suggestion is, is that you do two, because if you do the, once you do the first one, you can get the recording from it. You can take a look at the recording and this will allow you to see where you can tighten up your timing or where something uh, needs to be tweaked. And then you can have one more rehearsal to go over with that, that with your presenters and moderators to make sure that you have a the most successful show. Also, this is a good one, and that is make sure that you test your AV uh, equipment at least the day prior to the rehearsal and we always say join 30 to 60 minutes before. My suggestion is that you join 60 minutes before if you're dealing with AV equipment to make sure everything is working properly on the day. And if it's not, this gives you ample time to be able to switch out equipment or do whatever you need to do to make the adjustment. Designated ro roles and responsibilities. With designated roles, your moderators need to know. So for instance, on this call today, we have a couple of moderators. One is running everything in the background and manning the chat uh, from the attendees. And then you have your presenters. Um, they are the one, or me, basically. And so I have a different login and I know what my role is because we designated all of that stuff yesterday. And the second moderator is going to be solely approving questions and answering those questions back for you. So make sure that everybody knows what their role is in the show 
And then last but not least is to make sure that you practice. You can use welcome scripts, you can do transitions to the next presenter, um, sharing content, unmuting and muting. You wanna make sure that your presenters are very comfortable with the controls so that everything runs smoothly. So once you have your rehearsals underway, then let's also then talk about um, in terms of moderators and presenters. So these are some tips that you definitely need to know. Again, what I mentioned earlier was to make sure that you guys join at least 30 minutes earlier before the event. That's, you've already done your two rehearsals and everything is ready to go. The moderator of the meeting that is gonna be in charge of the equipment would wanna join earlier to just make sure everything is, is proper. And then everybody joins 30 minutes before just to go over any last minute touches and make sure that you know that the, the moderator as well as the presenter can only join in two different ways. They must join from the Chrome browser or they can join from the events app. The events app is free and downloadable from bluejeans.com forward slash downloads. The next thing to remember is, is that the moderator is the only one that can start the broadcast. And if you're going to create polls, so we sent out the poll earlier, and which was great. You guys had a chance to chime in and answer those polling questions. Maggie set those up in advance and was able to send that out as soon as we started the broadcast. You can also start polls on the fly. So you can set up some in, in the advance if you know there's some questions that you wanna answer, um, ask, then you can set those up in the beginning. If not, you can also set them up on the fly. So you can create a poll very quickly and then send it out. The other thing to remember is that each poll, can, you can only run one poll at a time. Upload videos in advance. Now this is crucial. Depending, you wanna make sure that you upload all your videos in advance. And there's two crucial, crucial points here. And that is, is that if the presenter is gonna be responsible for showing the video, then the presenter has to have a BlueJeans account and would upload that video to their BlueJeans cloud. If the moderator is gonna be responsible for showing the video for the presenter, then the moderator has to upload that video so it would go to their personal cloud so they have access to show it during the event. The other thing to note is, is that you wanna make sure you do that in advance because depending on the length of the video itself and depending on your bandwidth and the speed of your computer on how long it will actually take to upload a video if you try and do it during the course of the event. So we suggest that you always do that in advance. All right, so now let's move on and talk about uh, the meat and potatoes here, and that is to take a look at each one of the dashboards so that you can see what each role will experience during the course of an event. First, we're gonna start off with the moderator's dashboard because it is the most important. And it is simple and easy to use. It's broken up into three panels. You have on the left-hand side, the start broadcast and your record button. Remembering if you, you chose auto record, if I hit the start broadcast, it will also start my recording once the broadcast goes live. You have um, at, across from that in the center, you have your screen share and your sharing video. Uh, and so, you can choose between which one you need to do. And then at the very bottom is gonna be your chat. And with the chat, once you expand the chat, it will minimize your screen sharing and vice versa. The chat will allow you to access whether it be an all event chat or whether it's just the private moderator chat. Back to my left um, is their content sharing. This is where you would be able to, as the moderator, be able to see all your presenters and their video and see the content that's being shown by them. On the bottom, you can also control the layout for how your attendees view the event itself. And then over on my right-hand side, you have the participants list, your settings, your enabled and disabled video and audio for your presenters. And then at the bottom is where your, your chat, question and answers and polling exist. So let's take a look at each one of those panels individually. We're gonna start with the left-hand panel. And so you, again, are able to start and start your start and stop your broadcast. You can start the recording if audio 
auto recording is not chosen. You also have access to a duration clock. What I like best about this is this allows you to keep time on the event itself, but you can also use this as a tool to be able to prompt your presenters when they're up next. So if you have multiple presenters, you can private message them and let them know, um, get prepared, you're up in one minute or you're up in five minutes um, so that they can they see the same broadcast duration clock and they can be prepared. The current content sharing, of course, again, is where you will be able to see all that is being shown by your presenters. If you, the moderator, are sharing content, you would not be able to see anything that's going on here. Um, so if the moderator is going to be sharing content, I suggest that they have two screens. Current content sharing and the current speaker um, allows me down here at the bottom, again, allows me to control the video um, layout and content. And so let's take a look at the three different views that you have available. And we're going to start off with the active. We're going to start off with the active speaker view, which allows you to see up to nine thumbnails of your, pres uh, your presenters. Then you have the active presence. The active presence would actually allow you to be able to see just the, you have the speaker view, which gives you only the speaker, a large thumbnail, a large box of the just the speaker. You have active presence, which gives you the speaker and six, uh, up to six thumbnails of the other presenters below. And then constant presence is the one that we see here. And that allows you to see up to do nine thumb thumbnails of the people that are presenting. All right, so now let's take a look at the center panel. And this is where you share your content as the moderator. So this example is the person, um, when you're ready to share your screen, you click on the share screen tab, click on share your screen, and then the system will come up and allow you to share uh, determine which screen you're going to share if you have multiple monitors. If you just have the one screen, you just hit screen share, they'll automatically share for you. If you're video sharing, you're going to click on the right hand side and you will see all of the videos that you've uploaded previously. All you simply need to do from there is go ahead and click on the video itself. It will then allow you to play that video for your audience. That video will show up regardless of whether you're the moderator or the presenter, that video will show up on the screen so that you can actually see when the video is about to end, um, unlike the screen sharing. You can upload during the event, but we absolutely um, suggest that you stray away from that and do it in advance. Then you have your moderator's dashboard. Um, and the event chat just below. So again, if your screen sharing is expanded, then your group chat is minimized and vice versa. So once you expand the chat, the everyone chat allows anyone on the call to be able to type in and see all the information that flows through the event chat. You also have the, um, the moderator chat, and this allows the moderator to be able to chat privately with people in the background they're having some type of um, technical issue, then they can go ahead and communicate with them in the background without disturbing the event itself. And this also allows um, them to screen participants if they use our raised hand feature to make sure that um, whatever they're going to ask is pertinent. You can also sort out the platform um, end users and technical problems with disrupting without disrupting the flow. So the private chat, the private chat is always in in um, use, whereas the uh, public chat is determined whether or not you turn on that feature. At the top of my right hand panel is going to be the information under the menu. You can check. So previously, when we scheduled the meeting, after we went to invite each one of our roles. Once you're in the broadcast, you don't want to have to try and figure out how to get back to the link so that you can share it with somebody if should someone have the wrong link. So once you're inside the event, all you simply need to do is click on menu, click on join info. This will give you that same page that we saw. 
you can quick click between the tabs to um, copy the join information and then send it to that person in a private chat if they happen to join with the wrong permissions. You can also do announcements and announcements are really great because this allows you also to interact with your attendees. You can send out a customized announcement or we have some pre-populated pre announcements that you can send out uh, that will allow you to help your attendees join. So maybe you sent out a poll and you're not getting quite the response that you want so that you can um, go on and send out an announcement and say, hey, polls are closing in about one minute. Please make sure you get your answers in. Or you can send out an announcement um, of any different types. Then you have your settings. This is just pers your per own personal settings to choose between your audio and video devices. And then if we look down just below, then you will see the moderator also has the ability to switch between the presenters tab and the attendees tab. So the moderator can see all the attendees that are on the call and they can see all the presenters that are on the call as well as the moderators. Under the presenters tab, you can pin a participant, uh, a presenter to the screen, meaning that let's say you're doing a all hands meeting and you have the CEO on, you want to make sure that they are always visible and seen, then you can go ahead and pin them to the screen. And no matter how many presenters you have during the course, they will always stay visible. You can also initiate moderator chat with your pre presenters. As we talked about earlier, you can check their connection detail. Um, I can see how someone is joined. I can um, also be able to block in their audio and video content. So if I have multiple presenters on a call, what I typically do is once one presenter has gone on, then I will take away their uh, sharing content to make sure that they don't interfere accidentally with my next presenter. You can also um, just block their sharing and their video entirely, or you can just block their content sharing. You can demote a presenter down to an attendee. If they are completely done, you don't need them to answer any questions. You can send them back um, down to an attendee level where they can just kick back and be and listen. Or you can drop them from the event altogether, depending on the circumstance. With the attendees tab, you, you can also pin a, a attendee to the screen. This would be if they've, you've used the raised hand feature and brought them up so that they can be seen and heard. Then you can go ahead and pin them to the screen so that they stay visible. And then pin them and send them back to attendee once they've asked their question. You can also initiate moderator chat, of course, and you can check their connection details. You can drop them from the event and you can send them an announcement, which we talked about previously. Now let's take a look at some of uh, our menu settings and on the right panel at the very bottom, I told you that's where all the good stuff lies. These are my interactive interaction tools. And so the first thing that we are going to take a look at is the here on top is going to be questions. This is where the questions come in. Again, we have somebody that is do solely dedicated today to answering questions and approving. I mean, the approving questions and answering them as well. And so this is what you would see as the moderator that is doing that. Once you've done that, then you can post the question and it will allow for the presenter to either ask the, answer the question or you can post the question, answer the question and post it yourself. Presenters and moderators can respond to any questions that come through. The, you can sort them by in two different ways. You can sort them with likes or you can sort them by the time that they came in. And also, again, your moderator has the ability to filter these questions by approving only the ones that um, they want to allow to be answered. Next is my personal favorite. I love polling because you can send it out. It's done in real time. They're simple and easy to set up. You can set them up in advance or you can set them up on the fly. To, to actually create a poll, once you're inside the event, you just click, or even before the event, you just click on create a poll. You then see the next pop up here on my right. You enter the poll question. You can have, uh, you must have a minimum of two options answer. Uh, you can add up to six. 
once you have done that, done that, go ahead and create poll and your poll will be sitting there waiting for you to send it out. On this page, this shows what we see when we create the poll and start the poll. Um, this, you can also edit the poll if maybe you looked at it and said, ah, that's not really what I want. You can go back and edit it or I don't wanna send that poll out at all. I can just delete it. Here on my right in the center first, is going to be what the moderator sees as the poll answers are coming in live. On the right is what my participants and presenters will see. And presenters and attendees are able to participate in the polls, moderators cannot. You can also access this information, which we'll talk about when we get to post recordings after the event has concluded. All right. So with that, what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, um, is just show you a quick example of, this is the live event that we are currently in. And just to kind of go over, so you see it, pictures are great, but I think live is better. So this is the broadcast. Um, you can see the broadcast duration clock running here. To start recording, because they're red, you know that they are inactive. And then this is my content sharing. Because I'm already sharing my screen, I cannot see it. So I have a second monitor that I'm able to view the content that I'm sharing with you guys. Down on the bottom, um, because I'm in a moderator's role at this point, uh, I can also change the view of what the attendees are able to see. I can expand the screen if I wanna see the content larger. Here in my center is where I have uh, my share screen. Mine says stop sharing because I've already started sharing my screen. I can switch over to my videos tab very quickly. Click on a video, it would automatically pop up in this the white box here to my left and start playing. This is also where I can upload my videos. Down on the very bottom is the chat that we talked about. And so there have been quite a few private chats going on. We did not enable the public chat, so you can't see that. But this is where they all both would be displayed. The red dots um, allow you to know that, that these are the private chats, whereas the public chat shows up in blue. Then if we take a look over on our right hand side, then you will actually be able to see the join information as I talked about earlier. I can choose between these tabs and be able to then copy that information. As you can see here, we required registration, so I would not be able to access the information because it is not a generic, a generic join, it is a unique. Lastly, um, you also have the ability to send out announcements as we talked about. So you can choose from a template or you can type in your own personal message, uh, anything you want and send it out that way. Actually, I'm gonna just do this so you see what happens when you send an announcement. Attendees will see a thick flash across the top of their screens that um, they will need to actually exit out, which means that they most likely will read them first. And that way, you know that they're receiving your announcement and have to pay attention to it because it will cover a part of their screen. Now let's go ahead and move down to where we look at our presenters tab. As you can see, we have five different people on the line on our side. And then we have our attendees tab. This shows us all of the people that are currently on the call. If someone were to raise their hand from the attendee side, it would pop up with a red dot for the moderator to see. And it would show exactly who was um, asking for permission to be seen. I could then click on their, on their contact details and be able to ask, um, and they, sorry, initialize a personal chat with them. All right, so let's go back to our presenters tab. And then as the moderator of the meeting, you also have access to the mute and unmute. You can unmute all your presenters at the same time if you're going to have uh, the gallery view up and have like a round robin or have um, a panel type, you could do that. You can also mute everyone all at one time, or you can go through and do that individually. Here on the very bottom, is going to be where all of your question and answers lie. So there's been quite a few questions coming through. 
And then you also have access to your polls. So again, as the moderator of the meeting, I can sort these by likes or time. And also, uh, if I click on a poll, it will show me what poll is running and the duration that it's uh, been out and exactly what the results are as they're coming in live. I can create a new poll from here, simple, quickly, and easily. Put in all of my questions, my options. I can add up to six options as I spoke of earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that one. And with that, that shows you just how simply and easy this um, dashboard is to, to maneuver through as the moderator on the call. So I'm gonna move this out of our way and we're gonna go back to our slide presentation and take a look at the presenter's dashboard. So ordinarily your presenters come in in this role and this is what they see. They are able to see the duration clock as I spoke about. And they also will know that the recording and the broadcast are both live. They can see the attendee count on the right hand side. They are able to uh, adjust their microphone and camera to turn them off and on. They are also of course able to leave the meeting and if we move our way down, uh, partic they can see the participants list. They can also uh, use the event chat if it has been enabled. If it has not been enabled, then it will not be available for them nor the attendees. And then you have the moderator chat, which is always active, and your screen sharing that allows the presenter to be able to share their screen. And then, of course, they're able to participate in the polling as well, and they can answer any questions that come through. On the very bottom is, bottom is their settings on the right-hand side. And if you go all the way over to your left, they can also change their view. So if the moderator has changed the view for the attendees, the presenter can choose their own personal view for the event. You can also expand the screen so that you it takes up the full box if you so choose. All right, so that is the presenter's dashboard. Now let's take a look quickly at the attendees dashboard. This is what you guys are currently seeing. And so with the attendees dashboard, if you look here at the very top, this was an announcement that was sent out. And um, in order for that bar to go away, they have to dismiss it. They can expand their screen or they can adjust their audio, meaning they can adjust the volume and they can also adjust the equipment that they're using um, over here with the settings. On the very top on the right, this is in the box here on the right, you will see any of the questions, the polling information. You can um, also, there's a link that the moderator can send out that will allow you to see those question and answers and polling in a separate window. If you're not using a cell phone, you're using a computer, that's a very convenient way to go. And also they can participate in question and answer if that feature has been enabled, polling. The moderator chat is always live. You have your event chat if it's been enacted and as well as your raised hand feature. They can see participants if that feature has been allowed and of course they can exit the meeting. So those are our three roles and our three dashboards. Simple and easy to use makes events go off with great success. Now we're coming to the conclusion here and let's talk about the things that uh, you can access after the event is over. So with your post event, you have access, the first thing you need to know, two things, one I failed to mention earlier, when you're doing your rehearsal, after you have concluded your rehearsal, you can start and stop the broadcast as many times as you want until the day of the event. And even though the event is not ended, after you rehearse, you're gonna get an email that says, your event has ended, do not panic, it is not ended, it does not end until the duration and time of the date that it was set for have, have um, passed. So at the, the very, the real end of the event, what you'll see is that same email. And in that email, it will allow you to access all of the different things that we're gonna talk about next. So you'll have an event chat transcript. You will have a question and answer transcript with all of the questions. And then you will also have poll reports. So all of the, the polls that you sent out, you will have all of the information um, from those. And you can also, access the event participants list with the join information and the connection stats. You can also then 
utilize the recording, um, access the recording, and then share it with your participants later, post it on a website, whatever you choose to do with it, um, you will have that captured on video forever. Uh, the other thing that you can do, another same way that you can access this same event, remember when we went in earlier, we went to bluejeans.com forward slash scheduling, we went to the events tab, what you'll do, what you'll see there is the card that we initially set up will no longer be on the front. It will then be in the past events and under the past events, um, you will click on that and it will show you the card again. And you can then tap on one of the links for the recording, the event chat, question and answers, poll, and view the participants detail information. So two ways to access that information. And with no further ado, let's talk about some online resources uh, should you need them. So first, first offense is to go to support.bluejeans.com. This is where you're able to access our knowledge-based system. You can tap on the events tab uh, here on the facing tile, or you can simply type in uh, post event, or you can type in uh, tips and tricks for events and it will give you all the information that we have on that. You can choose the article that works best for you. You can also get to uh, our, go to our resource tab to then get to our live trainings, or you can also go to video tutorials or getting started. And here on the bottom, this is my personal favorite. This is the quickest way to get a hold of our support team. If you don't wanna sit on the phone or send an email, you, can, uh, you need a, a quicker response. Again, go ahead and click on the floating chat and uh, it will bring up a form. You'll put in the name and information and wait for a support team to come online. Another thing you can do to contact support is you can go ahead and click on the support tab and you will fill in the required information and then send that out. It will send them an email and uh, they will get back to you. There, you can also um, contact our support by phone. That information is located at the bottom of the tab and is also has a content inside the contact support when you, when you click on it. And then last but not least is if you need help with assistance with your first event, which I suggest everyone should do just to, so that you get the real feel of it, unless you're an expert, um, I suggest that you contact our events assist team they would be able to do three different levels. One is that they would be able to help you set up everything from scheduling the, the event itself and walking you through what you need to do to moderate the meeting. The second level would be for them to actually moderate the meeting, um, set it up and do a rehearsal with you. The last one would be for them to actually moderate the meeting from beginning and set it up from beginning to end. So if, you are so inclined check out the event assist and uh, from there we are going to conclude our training for today i hope it was informative for you and any questions that you may have go ahead and get those typed in and we will get those answered for you thanks michelle that was a wonderful presentation um, i hope everybody found it very thorough so we do have quite a few questions that have come in. So I will read through some of them that kind of are repeats and our wonderful moderators have been answering them throughout your presentation. So if you have, if you want a specific answer, it has been answered in the Q&A chat, but we'll just read a few for everyone. Okay. So let us start. Um, you mentioned streaming live. How well does the integration with Workplace work? Are there any tips? the events. So yeah, so I can yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can jump in. So for uh, for the Facebook uh, integration that we have, the best way to think about it is you're still gonna have everybody join the event, but then if you want to uh, stream it through Facebook, uh, all we do is do a one time setup with your Facebook account. And the way I like to kind of the analogy I use is it's almost like opening up a window into the event. So if you're streaming it through Facebook, the good news is you can get all those additional attendees and stream it out. Um, but obviously, they don't have all the, the Q&A, the polling, all the stuff that's baked into the actual events interface. However, they are able to see through that uh, and watch the event through Facebook. Um, 
Facebook Live. Then, of course, you know, afterwards you would be able to post it and, of course, get all the, you know, extra uh, Facebook love after the event and have people share it and things like that. So um, that's the way we can integrate with Facebook and it's just that one time setup. Thanks, Damien. And then next question is, how do you toggle back and forth between presenters? Is that a manual thing or does the product just do it? Yeah, so I did see that question. There's a couple layers to this answer. I'm glad you brought that one up. So when you're presenting, so let me take a reset. So obviously Michelle was uh, the moderator here and we have a couple, we have two or three moderators here, right? They're really dedicated to be behind the scenes and answering chat like I've been doing the whole time with Q&A and polls and things like that. And then Michelle has been presenting. However, anybody in that presenter list that Michelle showed you, the, the folks who are, you know, kind of on stage can come in and present and turn on their camera. Now, the moderators can always block them. Not only can they block the video and the audio, but they can also block them from sharing their screen. So it's a much more controlled atmosphere. Instead of having everybody behind the stage and running on, you know, when they want, we can kind of keep them locked out. And then when we're ready for Justin to present, for example, I can bring him in, unlock his video and audio, and let him share. So the, the capability is there to turn that on or off, you know, at any time during the event. And then the second layer to that is, being able to change the different layouts of the video. So for example, right now you should see me because I've determined I want to have just one video feed and it's going to be the person speaking, um, or maybe I want to have uh, one person speaking and then you know the, the thumbnails below, or maybe at the end we want to get into more of a round table panel discussion and I want to change it to this one, which would go up to nine video feeds. You know, obviously there's a couple of us showing our video here, but this would go up to nine. So you can change those at any time as well. Awesome. Thank you. And then can the moderators be outside of your organization? The moderator must have a BlueJeans account. Um, so whether they have their own account, they must have a BlueJeans account or you can set one up, um, use one of your licenses to set that up. So the answer is yes, but it's under those parameters. Yeah, and for the different roles, that's correct. And of course, for the presenter role, you do not need a, uh, a BlueJeans login. Um, you could just join as a presenter, just like you would join a regular BlueJeans meeting. And then even easier, as Michelle talked a little bit about, as far as the attendee role, you don't need anything. It's, it's you know, I like to say it's, a, it's equivalent to, if you're able to watch a YouTube video, you can watch this event. So you don't need to download, install on a mobile device. Of course, you need the mobile app, but from a computer, pop open your browser, and instantly it shows and you're listening and watching. So very easy for the attendees, which is typically, you know, like in this event, we've got uh, a lot more of attendees and just a, a small group of moderators and presenters. So usually it's 90 to 95 percent attendees. And those are the ones who are just joining over a click and join option. Thanks for that clarification. And then back to some details. Are you able to customize the pre-event and post-event welcome screens? And yes, you're absolutely those. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What's the last part? Once you uh, customize them, can you save them? Yes. So once you customize it, if you um, set it up that way, you're able to keep your same branding throughout. And they are customizable. Um, as I mentioned, when we were going through actually scheduling the event, you can go and set up under settings is where you would go and uh, customize those. Perfect. Yeah, and just the, there is a so there's there's a pre and a post. So uh, when you come into the event, when you came into the event today, you saw a blue screen that just said "Welcome to your event." There's music, um, but that's the screen you can brand. So that's what they'll see when the curtain's down, and we haven't started the broadcast yet. But they'll also have a, a, a thank you message. So at the end, you can have a different branded screen that when you end the broadcast, not necessarily end the event, but just end the broadcast, curtain goes down and then they'll see whatever image you uploaded for the for the close of the event. And by the way, um, I will continue to answer questions until there are no more questions. So uh, I see there's, I'm trying to stay up on top of them. I see there's six unanswered, so I'll get to those, but I'll just, Maggie, if you wanna just keep this thing open, I'll just keep answering questions until uh, there aren't any more. Yeah. Um, so do the poll result, results show on the screen for attendees or is that only on the sidebar for the moderators? Great question. Um, actually, the polling 
three results show up for the presenters, the moderator, and the attendees. So all can, can see the results. Perfect. And then do you need two screens if you want to share content? Does the presenter still need to have two screens to see the presentation themselves and any questions coming in? Yes. Um, if you're trying to do it from a laptop, you're it's if you have a large screen, then you can set it up so that you can only show one side of your screen and keep your content and information on the other. Um, my setup is, is I have a large monitor and my laptop screen. So I always keep the control panel on my laptop screen and I show the presentation on the second screen. And then yes. when you're doing the presentation, do you, can you share just one app or do you have to share your whole screen? In the events platform, unlike the meetings, you um, will share your entire screen. Um, and speaking of the meetings platform, what is the difference between BlueJeans meetings? And yeah, so, so, the, so the, the, I'll give you, a, I'd like to answer this because there's a, there's a sure. long answer to this, but there's also a very short answer that, that can ahead. help. And I put it in the, in the feed there as well. But the very simple answer is there's three things, three main things. One is simply the capacity, right? This goes up to 25,000, whereas our meeting platform goes up to 100. Number two is the additional control. So Michelle did a good job of showing the, the moderator dashboard. That's really unique to events, obviously, where you have the control to, you know, uh, promote people and mute people and um, have private chats, do Q&A, polling, announcements, layout changes. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of uh, goodies in that moderator dashboard that aren't available in the meetings uh, platform. And then the third one is just the additional features. So, you know, Q, uh, things I just talked about, you know, being able to do Q&A, have the pre and post event branding and, and start and stop mode, um, having the, the polling, the private chat, the moderator to moderator chat, moderator to presenter chat, announcements. Um, there's all kinds of uh, additional interactive capabilities and events because of the fact that just like today, right, most of you folks are joined as a, an attendee. So we can't hear or see you, so we have to be able to communicate. So we've been doing that over Q&A and polling and things like that. So uh, hopefully that clears it up. But we do have, uh, you know, on our website, there's a tab for meetings, a tab for events. We have data sheets and downloads and videos and all kinds of stuff that would get into a little bit more detail on that. Awesome. And then can you use the events app on an iPad? Can you run this from an iPad? Yes, um, you can, on any in a, uh, video enabled device, you're able to download the mobile app and it will determine by the, the code that you put in, whether or not it's an event or whether it's an actual meeting. So absolutely, that's one of the best features about BlueJeans. Yeah, and the only, the only little caveat to that is you cannot moderate from a mobile app. So if you're gonna be a moderator, you have to be on the desktop Obviously, because of real estate, you know, you got need that dashboard and you can't really do that on a mobile device. Um, so other than moderator dashboard, you can join from any other role. And then a question that's come up a lot is, do we have a plugin for Outlook with the events app? Damien, I'll defer to you. No, I don't believe, no. So the, the plugin is for the meetings. And the reason we do that is, is the purpose of the plugin is really to just do a quick, you know, hey, I want to invite Maggie and Michelle to a meeting, plug in, boom, send out the invite, uh, because it's just one link for a meeting, right? Whether you're a, they're the moderator the or the, the host or an attendee to a meeting, it's the same link. So it just plugs it in, sends it out. For an event, because there are three different roles and three different unique links, there's not a one-click plugin because you don't want to send everybody all three links. So once you schedule the event, you can invite them from the invite from the Blue Jeans events dashboard, or you can go, what I like to do just as my best practice is I like to schedule the event and then just go to my Outlook and then send Michelle and, and Maggie the moderator link. I'm going to send Justin and do the, the presenter link, and then I'm going to you know blast the attendee out, link out to everybody else. So it's not really that quick plug and, click and send because of the three different roles. Awesome, and I'll ask one more question, and then if we haven't gotten to your questions in the Q&A, please stay on and we'll answer those. Um, but what is the pricing packages for events? Yeah, so you can reach out um, 
to us, the, the very the simple answer, we have a lot of different pricing just depending on um, uh, a couple things. One is um, the capacity, right? This goes anywhere from up to 200 capacity all the way up to 25,000 and everywhere in between. So we have a lot of different pricing options between there. So it just kind of depends on what your expectation is as far as attendees. And then the second component to that is, are you just doing a one-time event or two events, or um, are you doing these you know, ongoing? So we have a per event plan, as well as a unlimited license plan, which would give you, you know, X capacity, let's say you need 1,000, 1,000 capacity, and you can have as many events as you want. M Maggie can launch it, Michelle can launch it, you can have as many uh, administrators or, or, or moderators, I should say, as you want, and it's an unlimited license. So the break-even, if you're gonna do more than a quarterly event, I would say, it makes sense to do the license, but uh, you can reach out uh, to me, to us, Damien at bluejeans.com, uh, and I can, you know, make sure I get you set up with the right folks internally, uh, D-A-M-I-A-N, and uh, we can get you more specific pricing based on those two criteria. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Damien, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, this is recorded, and I will send this out with the presentation afterwards. Um, and please stay on if your questions haven't been addressed yet. We are getting to those. But thanks. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody.